Guten Tag. My name is Kavita and my paper is on popular matchings with one-sided bias. Our input is a bipartite graph and every vertex seeks to be matched to one of its neighbors here. It has a preference order on its neighbors. One denotes top choice, two denotes second choice, and to be left unmatched is its worst choice. This is a well-studied model in two-sided matching markets and is used in many real-world applications, such as matching students to schools and doctors to hospitals. We seek a good matching here, and the usual notion of optimality is stability. A matching is stable if there is no edge that blocks it. An edge AB blocks matching M if both A and B prefer each other to the respective assignments in M. For instance, the red matching is stable since no edge blocks it. However, the blue matching is not stable since the edge between the two middle vertices blocks it. It's a classical result of Gale and Shapley that stable matchings always exist in such an instance and their algorithm finds one in linear time. Stability is a rather strict notion and it's known that all stable matchings have the same size and this could be only half the size of a maximum matching. Rather than empower every edge with a power to block matchings, we would like to relax stability to capture collective decision making. We would like to find a bigger pool of matchings that includes all stable matchings and also larger sized matchings. The notion of popularity is a relaxation of stability. To define popular matchings, we need to define these two operators at least as good as and better than. We say matching M is at least as good as matching M prime if the number of vertices that prefer M is at least the number of vertices that prefer M prime. Let's compare the red and blue matchings. Every vertex has to say which of these two matchings it prefers. The two middle vertices prefer the red matching, the two bottom vertices prefer the blue matching, and the top two vertices are indifferent between the two matchings. So the red matching is at least as good as the blue matching. Let's compare the red matching with the green matching. Four vertices prefer the red matching and two vertices prefer the green matching. So the red matching is better than the green matching and a matching such as the green one is not interesting to us because there is a better matching. This method of comparing matchings is closely related to the concept of Condorcet winner in social choice theory. This is a candidate who defeats every other candidate in their head-to-head -head election. Let us look at this simple example with three candidates, A, B, C. 30% of voters regard A better than B better than C. Another 30% regard B better than A better than C. And the remaining 40% regard C better than A better than B. A is the Condorcet winner here. In the A versus B election, A gets 70% of votes. And in the A versus C election, A gets 60% of votes. A slightly more relaxed notion is a weak Condorcet winner. This is a candidate who's never defeated. So rather than insist that X has to be better than every other candidate, we are happy if X is at least as good as all candidates. Condorcet winners and weak Condorcet winners did not always exist. This is because the operators, at least as good as and better than, are not transitive. Coming back to the world of matchings, a matching M is a weak Condorcet winner if M is at least as good as all matchings. Interestingly, in the world of matchings, weak Condorcet winners always exist. That is because every stable matching is a weak Condorcet winner. This was observed by Gardner Post many years ago. Let us call any such matching popular. By definition, we have shifted the, the focus from every edge being empowered with the power to block matchings to collective decision making because every vertex is asked which matching it prefers. Moreover, it includes all stable matchings because every stable matching is popular. 
In fact, the notion of popularity was introduced by Gardner in 1975 in this paper. And it allows for larger size matchings because stable matchings are actually mean size popular matchings. Thus, the Kale Shapley algorithm finds a minimum size popular matching in linear time. A maximum size popular matching can also be computed in linear time. Here we consider a new notion of what is a desired popular matching. The definition of popularity treated all vertices equally or uniformly. However, in many applications, vertices on one side of the bipartite graph are the main vertices. They are more important or active than vertices on the other side, such as in the application of matching students to schools. Students are the main players and schools are the secondary players. So along with overall popularity, we would like to give preferences of vertices in A more importance. That is, we would like our popular matching to also be popular within the set A or to be A popular. This is the notion of popularity in the one-sided model. Here, it's only vertices in A that have preferences and vertices in B are objects and they have no preferences. An instance in the one-sided model looks like this. Every edge has a unique rank associated with it, which is the rank its left endpoint assigns to its right endpoint. Here, the red edges are rank one edges, the blue edges are rank two edges, and the green edges are rank three edges. The definition of an apopular matching is analogous to the definition of a popular matching. However, it's only vertices in A that count here. Unlike popular matchings, apopular matchings need not always exist. And the first algorithmic question studied in popular matchings was to decide if a given instance admits an apopular matching or not. A linear time algorithm was shown for this problem in this paper. So we would like to find a popular matching that is also a popular. There can be exponentially many popular matchings in the given instance G. And since we want to give preferences or vertices in A more importance, among these large number of matchings, we would like to know if there is one that's also A popular. Let us call a matching that's both popular and A popular, fully popular. So the problem we consider here is, does the given instance G admit a fully popular matching, and if so, find one. We show a linear time algorithm to solve this problem. A popular matchings have a clean characterization. A matching is A popular if and only if every vertex in the set A is matched to either its top choice neighbor or its most preferred neighbor that is nobody's top choice neighbor. Also, all top choice vertices in V should be matched in any A popular matching. So our goal is to find a popular matching in G that contains only such edges or decide that no such popular matching exists in G. Let us see a characterization of popular matchings here. This is an LP-based characterization of popular matchings. So every popular matching admits a dual certificate. And we'll be using the following edge weight function, weight sub m here, to define this dual certificate. Matching m is popular in G if and only if there exists a vector alpha. Here n is the number of vertices that satisfies these conditions. Every vertex has an associated alpha value, and we want sum of all the alpha values to be zero. For each unmatched vertex, the alpha value should be zero, and every edge should be covered. That is, for any edge AB, sum of alpha values of A and B should be at least the weight of the edge AB. Every stable matching has a simple witness of its popularity. That is the all zeros vector. 
We call that our problem is to compute a popular margin that contains only certain edges. Unfortunately, most popular matching problems have turned out to be NP hard. These include finding a popular matching that contains two given edges, finding a popular matching that excludes two given edges. So the generic optimal popular matching problem where we have edge costs or edge weights and we seek a mean cost popular matching or a max weight popular matching that is NP hard. Very few popular matching problems have efficient algorithms. These include finding a mean size popular matching, finding a max size popular matching, finding a popular matching with one particular edge, and also the fully popular matching problem. In contrast to popular matching problems, most stable matching problems are polynomial time solvable. We'll solve the popular matching problem efficiently by modeling it as an appropriate stable matching problem in a new graph H. The graph H looks as follows. It consists of two halves, the upper half and the lower half. The upper half is almost the same as G. It has vertices of A on the left and vertices of B on the right. The lower half is a mirror image of G. It has vertices of B on left and vertices of A on right. So every vertex has two copies here, one on left, one on right. Every edge has four copies in edge. Two parallel edges in the upper half and two parallel edges in the lower half. It would be convenient to think of this pair of parallel edges as a bidirected edge. One edge directed from AL to BR that's denoted by AL plus BR minus, and the other edge directed from BR to AL, denoted by AL minus BR plus, and similarly in the lower half. Also, for every vertex in G, there will be an edge in H between the two copies of U. Vertex preferences in H are as follows. Every vertex prefers outgoing edges to incoming edges. Among outgoing edges, it is as per its original preference order in G. Similarly, among incoming edges, it is as per its original preference order in G. We claim any popular matching in G can be realized as a stable matching in H. Let n be any popular matching in G. Recall that every popular matching has a witness vector. We will use n's witness alpha as follows. We'll use the alpha values of vertices to partition the vertex set as shown here. So A is partitioned into three sets, A0, A-1, A1, and similarly B is partitioned into three subsets. The edges of the matching n are restricted to be only as shown in this figure here, that is between A0, B0, between A-1 and B1, and between A1 and B-1. That is because for any edge in the matching N, the sum of alpha values of its endpoints has to be zero. We construct the matching N alpha star in H as follows. For each edge AB in the matching, we have to decide whether we choose the blue edge or red edge in the upper half, and similarly the blue edge or the red edge in the lower half. We will use the alpha values of A and B to make these decisions. If alpha of A and alpha of B are zero, then we take blue edges from both the upper and lower half. And if alpha A is minus one and alpha B is one, we take blue edge from the upper half and red edge from the lower half. And and alpha A is one, alpha B is minus one, the other way around. So it will be useful to remember this point that when alpha values of A and B are zero, we chose the blue edges from both upper and lower half. The blue edges are incoming into AL and incoming into BL. Moreover, for every vertex U left unmatched in N, we take the edge between both copies of U and add it to N alpha star. 
So N alpha star is a perfect matching. We proved that N alpha star is a stable matching in H by using the constraints that the witness vector alpha has to satisfy. So we seek a stable matching in H that is a realization of a fully popular matching in G. What are the properties of such a stable matching in H? Since a fully popular matching is apopular and an apopular matching is constrained to use only certain edges, that gives us one necessary condition. Also, a fully popular matching has to be popular and by definition, a popular matching can use only certain edges. Those edges are called popular edges and edge is popular if there is some matching that contains it. So a simple necessary condition for a special stable matching S in H is that S avoids all invalid edges and all unpopular edges. So our starting step is to find if H has a stable matching that avoids all such edges. This is a well-studied problem in stable matchings and a natural variant of the gale shapley algorithm either computes such a matching or decides that there is no such stable matching. So let us run this variant of gale shapley algorithm in H. Vertices on left propose and those on right dispose. Suppose there is no stable matching in H that avoids the forbidden edges. Then we claim G has no fully popular matching. If there was a fully popular matching in G, then its realization would have been a stable matching in H that avoids all forbidden edges. However, we know there is no such stable matching, hence G cannot have a fully popular matching. So let's assume H has such a stable matching S0. However, we cannot conclude that G admits a fully popular matching. That is because of the structure of H. It consists of two halves, the upper half and the lower half. And a vertex could have one partner in the upper half and a different partner in the lower half. So when we project S0 back to G, the resulting matching is a half integral matching actually. For us to claim the projection is integral, S0 needs to be symmetric in H. That is, every vertex should have the same partner in the upper and lower halves. However, we will not construct such a symmetric stable matching. What we construct would be a partially symmetric stable matching, and that would be good enough to solve our problem. Let's study the matching S0. Now, it induces two partitions of the vertex set, as shown in this figure here. Vertices in UA and UB are those that are matched to their own twins in the matching S0. The remaining vertices, those that are matched to non-trivial neighbors, belong to one of the remaining eight sets. A plus consists of those vertices A that are matched in the upper half along outgoing edges. And A minus consists of those vertices A in the upper half that are matched along incoming edges. Similarly for B plus, B minus, and similarly for the remaining four subsets. Suppose N is a fully popular matching in G and let alpha be any witness of N's popularity. If there is a vertex A in, that belongs to both these red sets, then its alpha value has to be zero. Similarly, if there is any vertex B that belongs to both the blue sets, then its alpha value has to be zero. This, the proof of this lemma uses the fact that all stable matchings form a lattice. In fact, all stable matchings that avoid forbidden edges form a sub-lattice of this. And gale shapley algorithm finds a left optimal right decimal stable matching in this. So this lemma leads to our main idea. We will use the fact that certain alpha values are zero to augment our set of forbidden edges. So our lemma told us that if there was a vertex in the two red sets or in the two blue sets, its alpha value has to be zero. And we show a claim below that says more alpha values have to be zero. So to define the claim, let's introduce this subgraph G0, whose edge set is a set of popular edges. And let C be any connected component in G0. If the alpha value of one vertex in C is zero, then the alpha value of all vertices in C has to be zero. 
This follows from complementary slackness. And if we recall how we constructed special stable matchings in H, when alpha values of both endpoints were zero, we used the blue edges in both the upper and lower halves. So that's exactly what we're saying here again. Any special stable matching in H has to use the incoming edge into AL and the outgoing edge from AR for all A in the connected component C. So we could add these red edges to the forbidden set. So our algorithm is as follows. While there is an unmarked vertex in either both the red sets or both the blue sets, let's add all these red edges to the forbidden set where C is the component of this common vertex B. And let's update our current stable matching to eliminate all the newly forbidden edges. And if there is no such stable matching in H, then return G has no fully popular matching. Else update these sets. These correspond to the new stable matching SI plus one now. And we go back and check the while loop condition. It's easy to see that if our algorithm says no, then there is no fully popular matching in G. Because if G had a fully popular matching, then its realization would have been a special stable matching and that would have satisfied the required conditions. That is, it avoids all forbidden edges. So let's assume the algorithm terminates after k iterations of the while loop. So SK is the final stable matching. Let M and L be the projections of SK in the upper half and lower half of H. Our main theorem here is that M is a fully popular matching in G. It's quite straightforward to see that M and also L are A popular. That's because SK uses only valid edges. The tough part is proving the popularity of M and we'll do this as follows. Define the, set, the subsets ZA, ZB as given here. ZA is a set of all vertices in A that got marked in our algorithm and ZB is a set of all vertices in B that got marked in our algorithm. Restrict it to the subset ZA union ZB the matchings M and L are identical. So this is the partial symmetry of the final stable matching SK. SK could be different in the upper half and in the lower half, but restricted to this green set, it's the same. The proof of this claim first shows that M and L are stable matchings on this green set. Moreover, they are A popular and we'll use A popularity crucially here to argue that there has to be a unique stable matching on this green set. So M and L are the same on the green set. And now our final lemma that proves M's popularity. We prove M's popularity by defining a fitness vector as given here. Alpha values of all vertices in the green set is zero. Alpha values of all vertices in the blue set is one and in the red set is minus one. The while loop termination condition implies some inclusions and we already saw that M and L are the same on the green set. These two facts will be used in this proof. Hence, M is fully popular because it's popular. Thank you, Dankeschön.